In this video, I want to talk about the limit of the greatest integer function or floor function. I prefer to say it floor function because it reminds me the behavior of the function. But before we start talking about its limit, we make a brief review of the definition of this function and then we talk about the limit of it. The greatest integer of any value, any number, is equal to the greatest integer that is less than or equal to that value. This definition sometimes confuses students. So let's simplify this definition a little. The greatest integer of any number runs that number down to the nearest integer. For example, suppose we want to find the greatest integer of 1.7. What is the greatest integer number that is less than 1.7? If you consider a number line, 1.7 is approximately here. What is the greatest integer number that is less than this value? Note that from the definition, from the official definition of the greatest integer function, the greatest integer function is equal to the greatest integer that is less than or equal to that value. What is the greatest integer number that is less than 1.7? The greatest integer that is less than 1.7 is 1. Or, more simply, we can find the greatest integer of 1.7 from the second definition. Run that number down to the nearest integer. If we run 1.7 down to the nearest integer, we get 1. So, get the greatest integer of 1.7 is equal to 1. Another example, what is the greatest integer of 0 0.999? 0 0.999 is very, very close to 1. It's between 0 and 1, but is very, very, very close to 1. But note that always this function runs your number down to the nearest integer. Actually, it doesn't matter that your number is very, very close to 1. This function always runs your number to the left runs to the greatest integer that is less than that value, less than your number. So if we run 0 0.999 to the nearest integer that is less than this value, we get 0. This function always runs the number down to the nearest integer. So the greatest integer of 0 0.999 is equal to 0. Another example, what is the greatest integer of 3? Because 3 itself is an integer, so the greatest integer of 3 is equal to 3. The greatest integer of any integer number is equal to itself, actually. Another example, what is the greatest integer of negative 1.2? Negative 1.2 is approximately here. If we run this number to the left, if we run the number down to the nearest integer, the greatest integer of negative 1.2 is negative 2. Always run to the left. Don't forget this point. What is the greatest integer of negative 0 0.1? Negative 0 0.1 is almost close to 0. But don't forget, it doesn't matter that your number is close to which integer number. The thing that matters is that this function always runs your number down, runs to the left. If you consider a number line, this function always runs your number to the left, to the nearest integer, but to the left. So the greatest integer of negative 0 0.1 is equal to negative 1. And at last, what is the greatest integer of negative 1? Again, negative 1 is an integer, so the greatest integer of this number is equal to itself, is equal to negative 1. Don't forget, the greatest integer of any integer number is equal to itself. This function only affects on the numbers that are not integer. If your number is an integer, the greatest integer of that number is equal to itself. The typical notation for the greatest integer function is a square brackets, but in some textbook, 
they show the greatest integer function by this notation or by this notation. And you should get familiar with these two notation also. Let us start our discussion about the limit of the greatest integer function. For example, suppose we want to find the limit of greatest integer of x or floor of x as x approaches 1 from the left. We know that as x approaches 1 from the left, the values of x are close to 1, but their values are less than 1. For example, the value of x is 0 0.9 or 0 0.99. So the x which is inside the greatest integer function is less than 1. It's very, very close to 1, but its value is less than 1. And we know that this function always rounds the number down to the nearest integer. And if we round the number that is less than 1 down to the nearest integer, we get zero so the limit of greatest integer of x as x approaches one from the left equals zero by looking at the graph of the greatest integer function also we can find the limit if we get closer and closer to one from the left you can see that this function the y values of this function are constantly zero so if we get closer and closer to one from the left the y values are always zero, so the limit is zero. But what is the limit of this function as x approaches one from the right? We know that as x approaches one from the right, the values of x are greater than one. For example, the values of x are 1.1 or 1.01, but their values are greater than one. And if we round the number that is greater than one down, the nearest integer we get 1 so the limit right limit equals 1 also we can find the right limit from the graph if we get closer and closer to 1 from the right but on the graph the corresponding y values of this function are constantly 1 so the right limit from the graph of the function also equals 1 so we can find the limit algebraically from the definition of the function or by looking at the graph of the function. The right limit equals 1. You can see that the left limit and right limit of this function at 1 are not equal to each other. And we know that if the left limit and right limit are not equal to each other, the limit of the function at that point does not exist. So the limit of greatest integer function of x as x approaches 1 does not exist. In general, by similar reasoning, we can prove that the greatest integer function does not have limit at any integer. For example, suppose we want to find the limit of the greatest integer of x as x approaches 3. If we get closer and closer to 3 from the left on the function, you can see that the y values of the function equal 2. If we get closer and closer to 3 from the right on the function, if we get closer and closer to 3 on the function from the right, the corresponding y values equal 3. From the left, it is equal to 2. From the right, equals 3. And because they are not equal to each other, the function does not have limit. In general, the greatest integer function does not have limit at any integer number. However, this function does have a limit at any non-integer number. For example, suppose we want to find limit of greatest integer of x as x approaches 3.7. 3.7 is a point between 3 and 4, a little closer to 4. We can suppose 3.7 is here. If we get closer and closer to 3.7 from the left, or from the right, but on the graph of the function, you can see that the corresponding y values of the function are constantly 3. If we get closer to 3.7 from the left or from the right on the function, the corresponding y values are constantly 3, so the limit equals 3. Actually, for finding this limit, we don't need to look at the graph of the function. 
Easily with just a pl simple plugin, we can find the limit. If we plug in 3.74 x, greatest integer of 3.7 equals 3. Don't forget that this function runs the number down to the nearest integer. If we run down 3.7, we get 3. So we don't need to look at the graph. Only with a simple plugin, you can find the limit. Another example. Limit of greatest integer of x or floor of x as x approaches negative 0.5. We know that this limit exists because greatest integer of x does have limit at any non-integer number. And in this example, x approaches to negative 0.5, which is a non-integer number. And to find the limit, we just need a simple plugin. We just need to substitute negative 0.5 for x to find the limit. If we substitute negative 0.5 for x, the limit equals greatest integer of negative 0.5. We know that greatest integer function runs the number down. If we run down negative 0.5, it is equal to negative 1. So the limit equals negative 1. We can find this limit also by looking at the graph of the function. If we look at the graph of the function, if we get closer and closer to negative 0.5 on the graph of the function, the graph of the function, the y values of the function are constantly negative 1. When we get closer and closer to negative 0.5 from the left or from the right on the graph of the function, the y values of the function are constantly negative 1. So the limit equals negative 1. From the above discussion, we can conclude that greatest integer of x does not have limit at any integer number. However, does have limit at any non-integer number. See you in the next video.